Now, as you might know if you were listening yesterday, on Tuesday of this week, I paid a visit to the chemotherapy unit of University Hospital Kerry. Uh, while I was there, I spoke to staff. I spoke to uh, Dr. Richard Bambury, who is one of the oncologists working there. And I also... I heard the same thing from nearly everybody I spoke to. They were all full of praise for the staff at the unit, the treatment they received, the friendliness, etc. Not to mention the medical attention, of course. But the one thing that they all said was that the surroundings at uh, the unit are pretty drab and depressing. And as you can well imagine, going through chemotherapy is tough enough um, without having to sit in what, what, to be honest, is a pretty pretty dull and lifeless uh, surroundings. So With that in mind, uh, we thought we would go up there and chat to a few people and uh, get the ball rolling on perhaps uh, getting the place done up. There's a a charity being formed, and you'll hear about that in a moment, uh, who have a great mission to to, uh, totally renovate the chemotherapy unit. But first of all, let's hear from the second patient I spoke to. Well, ex-patient is more correct because uh, he is well recovered and uh, back to full health at this stage. But he's Mikey Sheehy from Tralee, Mikey Sheehy Jr., son of the famous Kerry footballer. And uh, not many of you might know this, but Mikey had his own cancer journey a couple of years ago. And when I went up there, he very kindly shared his story with me. Um, in 2013, um, I was 31 years of age. Um, we, myself and my wife Suzanne, had a baby girl at the time. Roisin was two years of age. Uh, Suzanne was three months pregnant with our second child. Um, and I was diagnosed in May uh, with Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a, a kind of a blood cancer, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Bolt out of the blue? Absolutely, bolt out of the blue. Uh, I was fit and healthy at the time um, and cancer really wasn't something that I had ever thought about or ever needed to think about or wanted to think about, to be honest with you. W- was the initial diagnosis, was was the prognosis okay? You know, um, I suppose um, when I was diagnosed in May, there was uh, obviously there's uncertainty is the first thing you feel. Um, uh, my wife was three months pregnant. We arrived in to... Uh, the general hospital here um, I was diagnosed within about a week and a half uh, my treatment started the following week um, everything was done in house here in, in Tralee General Hospital uh, I didn't have to move anywhere uh, I didn't have to go to Cork uh, which is fantastic I mean I don't think people realise how important that is I mean I was 15 minutes away from my house um, I was able to come in here get chemo uh, have outpatient appointments have consultations um, you know it's a really important, important aspect you know we have a local service here a local cancer service um, and a really good cancer service at that to be honest I gather you're perfectly well now yeah uh, went through six months of chemotherapy um, I finished up on the 31st of October 2013 and our second baby girl Alva was born 10 days later um, which was great um, I mean, like, I suppose it's hard to put into words. Like I said, prior to my um, diagnosis, cancer is never something that I would have thought about. I would have known nothing about chemotherapy. Uh, I would have had no reason to visit the day unit here. But I mean, the bonds that myself and Suzanne built up between the nurses, the consultants, the girls who were bringing their own tea and coffee to me on a daily basis when I was getting chemotherapy were outstanding. And like, I, we really and truly just couldn't fault the care we got here. Now, I know they're working in, very stre- in a very stressed environment. Um, I mean, the unit here, um, the unit here run by Abby, by Una, by Sinead, I'm probably going to leave out a few nurses. I mean, they're working under severe pressure. Um, the, I really and truly don't know how they're able to give the care that they do give, but they are able to give it. And I, I just love to be able to, to see, I suppose, the chemo day unit expand and, you know, the services to expand. And I'm not saying to make it easier for them because it's never going to be easier for them, but just to make life a little bit easier maybe for the patients and for the nursing staff. OK. And what was the whole experience of going through chemo like for you? I mean, like, I suppose, like a lot of us, you probably heard all the stories about the hair falling out and the sickness and everything. Was it as bad as you thought it would be? Or? Uh, yeah, I suppose I I had six months of chemotherapy. So... The start of my chemotherapy was entirely different to the finish of my chemotherapy. Uh, I was in one day every two weeks. Um, I was in for about four, four and a half hours uh, for infusions. I didn't lose all of my hair, but my hair did thin. Um, it wasn't really a big deal for me. It probably would be, uh, I'm not sure, maybe it would be a bigger issue for women. It's just something that didn't really bother me. I was in to get cured, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, and... Um, like I said, I was in one day every two weeks. Um, 
I was basically thrown down for maybe two, two and a half days after it where I'd sleep or I wouldn't particularly eat all that much. Um, but like Abby just said there, I mean, like the medication and the auxiliary medication, like the anti-nausea medication that they that they give us over here is such a big help. Um, and I mean, like they provide such a great aftercare as well. It's um, it's fantastic. And, you know, if there's anyone who's listening to this, uh, Mike, who's kind of just been diagnosed and they know they're starting chemo tomorrow or next week or whatever, is there anything you could say to them that might maybe help? Yeah, I suppose everyone's journey is probably different. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty, you're nervous, you're scared, but I mean, you just have to place your trust in the professionals and the care caregivers, um, especially, like I said, you could really and truly couldn't go to a better place than Kerry General Hospital, um, and I'm, I'm not saying that lightly. Yeah, and there's a nice vibe in here as well, you know, it, it's, it's all quite positive and... Yeah, it is, it really is positive. Um, I mean, like, the girls are always around the place with a, well, most of the time, with a smile on their face. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But, I mean, they really and truly are. I mean, the the care that they give is is off the charts. It really and truly is. But I suppose looking at the the wider environment of the ward, I mean, it could be improved. There's no point in saying otherwise. I'm not saying at a service level, but I'm saying in terms of the the facilities within the ward. Um, I mean, you're kind of looking at, drab walls and mm-hmm. I mean even small things down to Wi-Fi access or the chairs that you're sitting in. People probably might think that they're small things mm-hmm. but when you're in the middle of a six month chemotherapy treatment they turn out to be quite big things. Um, so I suppose like I said it'd be great if the unit could get a bit of support locally and nationally obviously um, and try and you know progress and move on and yeah. try and get a better unit out of it basically yeah because we don't know when any of us could be here absolutely 100 yeah. percent um like i said i was 31 years of age when i was diagnosed it's the last thing in the world i was i was thinking of at the time yeah it's like a bolt out of the blue but it is what it is you have to deal with it and like i said the the staff the medical staff here are, are you know they're probably the best people to help you through that phase yeah. and, and not alone did you get come out the other end but you're now running in the local elections <laughs> i'm ro- yeah i'm running in the local elections absolutely um canvassing will make chemotherapy <laughs> seem like a walk in the park i would imagine yeah absolutely it's look it's one of my big issues to be honest with you um i'm not um i'm not naive enough to think that i have the ability to go in and Change wave a magic wand. Wave a magic wand and change the H- HSC and Kerry General Hospital. But I think from a local level, there are a lot of things that can be done to help auxiliary services and to help cancer patients. Um, it's a huge issue. It's becoming a bigger problem um, locally, nationally, globally. I mean, it was a case whereby uh, one in four people would have some sort of a cancer diagnosis before uh, at some stage in their life. It's now turning into close to one in three Mm-hmm. closer to even one and two depending on what reports you read yeah. um, so it is a major issue um, and for a community we obviously we, we need a first class the, the first class service is here but they're probably not working in first class facilities okay. that's what the issue is and that's Mike Sheehy who uh, has been through his own cancer journey received treatment at the University Hospital Kerry chemo unit uh, but as he says while the, the staff are brilliant the treatment is brilliant but the place itself leads a lot to be desired we'll find out a little bit more about that after the break we'll be talking uh, to one of the nurse managers from uh, nursing directors from uh, University Hospital Kerry and finding out about what they're planning and doing about uh, getting the place renovated in the long term and uh, hearing from more patients as well because there's lovely comments coming in from people about their experiences of of uh, receiving chemo at the hospital. Hopefully it'll help people who are out there who maybe have just been diagnosed with cancer to maybe take some of the fear out of it uh, by listening to these stories. So we'll have more of, on those after the break and we've also got another competition for you so don't go away. Talk about on Radio Kent.